So we're going to look at uh, childhood motor development, uh, particularly just focusing on uh, the time between uh, newborn and five years of age. Um, of course, uh, motor development uh, is most prominent during that period, although there is uh, some more fine motor tuning that goes on uh, after five years of age, but we're really going to focus on um, this early period because this tends to be uh, where the USMLE likes to test. So the motor development involves uh, a lot of things uh, involving function and myelination of neurons. Myelination, uh, the process really isn't complete until uh, around two years of age. And the CNS continues to develop even beyond that. So um, this is a big reason why, uh, why it takes some time for, uh, for these developmental milestones to happen. It also involves the development of proprioception, which is uh, highly involved in fine motor activities. Uh, and some of those cerebellar tracts. And also uh, muscular strength is going to be important when it comes to things like crawling and walking. Uh, anything that interferes with these processes will result in a delay or inability to attain these milestones. So when you think of things like neuronal function, cerebral palsy, traumatic or hypoxic ischemic brain injury, uh, those things uh, are going to make it difficult for, uh, or if not impossible, for the baby to achieve some of these milestones. Rett syndrome is a degenerative pervasive developmental disorder. It's typically seen in uh, young girls, and this is actually really, really sad. Usually the girl hits about three or four years of age. She's totally normal, and then um, she regresses and loses all her uh, all her milestones and ultimately dies in childhood. So that's really sad. Uh, the myelination disorders are also going to affect motor development. So there's lots of those based on the enzyme. Muscular strength, of course, that's going to matter when it comes to walking and things like that. So those would be things like muscular dystrophy. Uh, developmental coordination disorder is really just a diagnosis of exclusion. So this would be a child who uh, is delayed in their acquisition or execution of motor skills uh, that would be expected at their chronological age and it interferes with daily life and manifests uh, by clumsiness or incoordination and you have to exclude any kind of intellectual disability or neuromuscular condition, neuronal condition, myelination condition. Uh, so there's no organic cause and it's not due to an intellectual disability. And we're going to see when we talk about motor development, cognitive development, social development, you really can't separate them from one another. Because, for instance, if a child, when a child begins to walk, they're able to explore more things and that helps with their cognitive development. And when a baby or when a child is able to manipulate objects and throw the objects, uh, it helps them with playing with other children and uh, for instance, if a baby's not able to hear, they're not going to be, be able to respond to voices, and so that's going to delay language. And so uh, you can see how, uh, how there's, a, uh, there's an interplay between motor, social, cognitive, and organic disorders um, that uh, can affect one another. So this is just a cartoon of uh, how a baby may look if placed on the floor uh, from uh, birth uh, to one year of age. So usually by one year of age, they're walking. Uh, but when they're born, they're in this flexed, crouched position. Okay, so I came across this book at Barnes & Noble a while back. And it, uh, you'd think this would be a great book for a mom to buy, except... Mothers, particularly first-time mothers, are very neurotic about their children making sure they develop for good reason. You know, you want everybody wants their child to be healthy. However, children are not robots, and they're not going to just wake up at six months of age and be able to roll over. Uh, they're not going to wake up at 15 months of age and suddenly be able to walk. So this can be problematic and you shouldn't get this idea in your head that uh, these things just happen at these points in time. There are normal, there's normal range for all of these uh, milestones and uh, so usually uh, it's going to be considered a delay if it's two or three months past uh, when that milestone should occur, not if it doesn't occur within a week or so uh, of, that, uh, of that expected date. And I should add uh, before we begin talking about all these, uh, that if a baby is premature, 
uh, you're going to you're going to subtract that age off their chronological age when it comes to these milestones. So in the newborn, uh, the infant will tend to lay in a flexed position. Uh, they may turn their head from side to side. Uh, if you hold them uh, in horizontal suspension, there will be some head sagging, but the baby should not be hypotonic. You shouldn't have an inverted U baby. Uh, all primitive reflexes should be present. So you'll have the moral reflex, you'll have the palmar grasp reflex. Uh, when you place your finger in their hand, they should grab onto it. Uh, when I was little and my sister was born and uh, I saw her for the first time in the crib, I stuck my finger in the crib and she grabbed onto my hand. And I thought that was like really special. Like she loves me, I'm her brother. And then I learned in medical school that that's just a reflex. And it wasn't really her saying, I love you brother. It was just, just her being a normal baby. Uh, the rooting reflex, place your finger on the baby's cheek, it'll turn towards uh, the finger. Um, that's just simulating uh, that the baby senses a nipple. Uh, tonic neck reflex, you turn their neck to one side, you have the opposite side uh, flexing, going into that fencing position. By one month of age, the baby should be able to raise their head off the table and that head sagging should be pretty much gone. And when the baby's head is manipulated, the infant will usually not maintain contact, that's, con uh, that's called doll's eyes, and if that were to happen in an adult, that would be highly abnormal, but in a, a newborn, that's perfectly normal. As far as weight, infants should reattain their birth weight by two weeks of age, and then thereafter, they grow about 30 grams a day until four or five months of age, by which uh, time their birth weight should have tripled. At two months of age, any head leg should be gone, and the head and trunk uh, should be held in the same plane, or uh, if they're held in horizontal suspension, so they should be nice and straight. Uh, the infant should also be able to hold their head steady when they're sitting in, uh, in somebody's lap. Um, so when they're newborn, you don't want to have them sitting in your lap, you know, sitting down. Uh, but by two months of age, they should be able to hold their head in place. Now, they're not sitting on their own. They're sitting on your lap with you supporting them, but they should be able to hold their own head steady on their own. And then the infant should also be able to raise their head slightly when laying in prone position. So for baby, it's really important that they get this tummy time laying in prone position. They should really get uh, ex uh, experience laying in all sorts of different positions. Um, but this prone position is really important for them to be able to develop their neck muscles. Now remember, when a baby gets put to sleep, not the prone position, that increases the risk of sudden infant death syndrome. You want them laying on their backs. By four months of age, the infant should be able to lift their head above the plane when you're holding them in horizontal suspension. So, for example, if you were holding this baby in horizontal suspension, baby can lift his head above the plane like he is right now. The infant should also be able to grasp objects like a rattle and may reach for objects that are held above him or her. So remember that when the baby is born, really the visual acuity is pretty bad. It's uh, baby's only really able to see uh, about 8 to 12 inches, which is just enough to be able to see mom's face when uh, he or she is breastfeeding. But by about four months of age, the baby's uh, acuity is developed enough to where uh, he or she can definitely reach objects if they're held above him or her, him or her, and that's really uh, useful for the baby to develop their hand-eye coordination. So that kind of play is uh, is very beneficial to the baby. Also, by four months of age, and for sure by six months of age, these primitive reflexes will begin to disappear. And you might think, oh, okay, well that's just fine. That's just a normal part of growing up. Who cares? But actually, it's really important when you think of that gr palmar grasp reflex. If a baby's holding on to a rattle, for instance, the baby's not going to be able to let it go because that rattle is in their hand and it's stimulating that grasp reflex and the baby isn't going to be able to let it go. But when the baby is able to let it go, the baby's going to be able to manipulate the object, feel it, uh, maybe uh, hand it from hand to hand, uh, and that's going to uh, help with their sensory uh, development and, and also with some cognition with uh, being able to feel what this object is compared to what it looks like. Uh, they'll also be able to inspect their hands at midline and baby is really hand focused at this age so they'll be uh, they'll be looking at their hands a lot of times uh, when they're when they're troubled they'll put their hands in their mouth as a way to try to soothe themselves. And then infants should also show some more purposeful motor activity as opposed to 
more in the infant stage or the newborn stage when they're just kind of flailing. And by four or five months of age, the growth will start to slow uh, to 20 grams per day uh, until one year of age uh, in which the birth weight should have tripled. That should say tripled there. So here's a baby grasping a rattle. And uh, depending on whether or not this baby has lost uh, her palmar grasp reflex, she'll be able to either throw that rattle uh, or drop it. Babies love to drop things as soon as they lose that palmar reflex because it's a cause-effect thing. So they're learning that when I release my hand, this thing drops and makes a noise. Um, and that's, again, normal. It usually annoys parents, but this is good for babies to learn uh, this cause and effect and with their cognition. So you can see how th this motor development is really interplaying with cognition as well, with cognitive development. By six months of age, the baby should be able to sit up without support. Uh, however, the baby will usually be hunched over when they're sitting up. So like this baby here, uh, that's totally normal. Uh, so they should be able to sit up, but not necessarily in an erect position. And they should also, uh, usually they're able to roll, uh, roll over or crawl, but not necessarily by six months of age, six, six to nine months of age, um, they'll be able to roll over and crawl. So you see this baby crawling here and then uh, may be able to roll over. And definitely by six months of age, those primitive reflexes should be gone. If primitive reflexes don't go away, then you're concerned about uh, some kind of upper motor neuron pathology. And then uh, the infant should also be able to transfer objects from hand to hand uh, with the loss of that grasp reflex. Here's a baby crawling. Lots of cute pictures here in case you haven't noticed. And rolling over. By eight to nine months of age, the baby should be able to crawl and roll over and also be able to sit straight without support. So you see this baby sitting straight up. Um, the pincer grasp also develops, and the pincer grasp is really, really useful for the baby because now the baby is going to be able to take little tiny bite-sized pieces of food and feed himself, and so that's going to take a little relief off of mom, not going to have to constantly be using the spoon or the bottle. Um, important, though, at this point to, uh, to um, make sure that the baby has uh, appropriate size food and also appropriate uh, size toys. You don't want a uh, baby to put something in their mouth and choke. Also, since the baby is now crawling, it's going to be very important to uh, put uh, barriers up against any stairs um, or doors where the baby might be able to get out uh, or fall down. Infant is usually able to walk with assistance by this point, uh, either holding one or both hands uh, or arms. And it's really important to, uh, to help the baby walk. They're usually not going to be able to just walk on their own. Uh, they need to build that muscle strength in their legs. And so it will be useful to the baby uh, for you to help them uh, walk, help them uh, develop that muscle strength so that when they do uh, hit the time where they're able to walk, it will come uh, a little bit easier. However, if you don't do this, a lot of times these babies will just find a way to do it. They'll go from crawling and then they'll get bored with that and then they'll realize that there's furniture here and I can use this furniture to get myself up even higher and see more things. And so this, they'll do this thing uh, that's called cruising. And this helps them develop that muscle strength for walking. And so this is a baby that's cruising. The uh, baby is grabbing onto the furniture and uh, pulling himself up and uh, walking along the furniture using the furniture as support. Here's the pincer grasp. So you can see this baby is feeding himself with uh, what looks to be little bite-sized pieces of food, small pieces. Very important to make sure that baby is given soft and small pieces of food. Baby's also uh, able to walk with assistance. By a year of age, the baby's birth weight should have tripled. The length of the baby will have increased by 50%, and the head circumference will have increased by 10 centimeters, so quite significant growth. Baby should also be able to stand on their own, but not necessarily walk. So baby is usually, this is right around the point when the baby is trying to take their first steps. Maybe they've taken their first steps, but sometimes they're kind of stumbling a little bit, but definitely should be able to at least stand on their own. And then the baby's definitely cruising by this point, and that's really helpful for them uh, to learn how to walk. And then uh, they're also able to uh, turn the pages of a book, and that's going to take some coordination, hand-eye coordination, 
and this is also a time when it's uh, really good uh, cognition wise for the baby to be exposed to picture books and uh, and objects uh, that the parent can name and so the baby can expand their vocabulary. So here's a baby walking. 12 to 15 months of age is the normal period. By 16 months of age, child should definitely be walking and often they're able to run. When you look at them running though, they're not running like a sprinter. They're running kind of the same way that they walk. So a baby walks, they kind of have a genuverus, so the bow-leggedness. And when they're running, they're kind of running the same way too. So it looks kind of awkward, uh, but they're essentially just walking faster. Uh, the child will also be able to crawl up a stair or a set of stairs. And again, this, you have to stress the importance of this, making sure that there's safety uh, precautions that are taken. And a good way to explain it to the parent is just get down to wherever your child's line of sight is and look for anything that might be tempting to grab at or crawl at or pass. They should also be able to scribble with a crayon, and that is a fine motor uh, development. And then classically, by 16 months, the child should be able to build a tower of two or three blocks. I don't like this. I don't usually ask parents this uh, if I encounter pediatric patients because I don't think this is really useful. Not all children have blocks. And so if you don't have blocks, it's going to be difficult to build a tower. Uh, but this is something the USMLE loves to ask. And so the formula that you can use is baby's age times three, and that's the number of blocks they should be able to build. Now, you know, an adult who's 30 years old is not going to be able to build a tower of 90 blocks, but you see how that works for, you know, the first four or five years of life. Uh, so by 16 months of age, baby's about one and a half, one and a half times three, about two or three, um, three, three blocks usually. And again, this reflects growth and fine motor development. So here's baby crawling upstairs. Probably not the best stairs to be crawling up because you got hard wood and you got four steps, but crawling up the stairs is usually not quite as dangerous as crawling down the stairs. By 18 months of age, the, ch the child should be able to run by this point, but it looks kind of bumbly. Uh, they should also be able to walk up and down the stairs with their hands held. And so I'm talking here about walking up and down stairs with alternating steps like an adult. And then often they'll be able to sit on a small child-sized chair. And that takes, uh, again, you, uh, some coordination, uh, having the legs in different positions than the back uh, in positions that they're not used to. And classically, by 18 months, they should be able to build a tower of four blocks. So one and a half times three, about four. By two years old, the child should be able to jump in place. Again, we're talking about uh, cerebellum and coordination here. So you can see that um, early on, it's about development of musculature. Now it's more about development of coordination. The children are usually really content in inserting objects into holes. Uh, so you'll put a set of coins in front of the baby and the baby's gonna take the coins and try to insert it into vent holes and uh, into, uh, if you have, still have uh, like, uh, if you still have like disc drives, they'll wanna put things in there. And again, it can be something that's annoying, but it's totally normal. They're looking at cause and effect here. Uh, classically, by two years old, the child should be able to build a seven block tower. By 30 months of age, two and a half years old, the birth weight should have quadrupled and the child should be able to properly ascend the stairs with alternating feet. Now it's going to take uh, it's going to take the child longer to descend the stairs than ascend the stairs because ascending or descending the stairs takes a lot more coordination and it, it is a little bit more uh, a, a little bit more difficult with the musculature. Um, also, descending the stairs is a lot more dangerous. Uh, people tend to fall down the stairs more than they fall up the stairs, but. I have a tendency to fall up the stairs personally, which is kind of embarrassing. Um, child should also be able to stand on one foot. Again, here we're talking about, uh, about cerebellar development, proprioception. By three years of age, the child should be able to descend the stairs with alternating feet. So now the child should be, go be able to go up and down the stairs uh, with uh, alternating feet. But this still doesn't necessarily preclude uh, that you might want to have a barrier uh, from the stairs because uh, you never know if a child might uh, 
fall down the stairs. You want to keep that under supervision. They should also be able to properly draw or copy a circle. A circle is a very basic shape, um, unlike a square or a triangle, and so this, is, this one comes first. By this point, also, two to three years of age, they have developed left or right handedness. Uh, I don't think uh, it's really discouraged here anymore, but in some cultures, they discourage left handedness. Don't ever do that. Um, it's hardwired into the child. Uh, so you'll only discourage uh, development if you try to force the baby to be right handed, force the child to be right handed. Child should also be able to ride a tricycle if they're trained. Now, you're not going to just take a three year old and put them in front of a tricycle and say, if you can't ride this tricycle, you're developmentally delayed. They need to be shown how to ride the tricycle, but they should be able to do it if they're shown how. Uh, but it's very important also to use a helmet. By four years of age, the child should be able to hop in place. They should be able to throw overhand. Now, babies are going to drop stuff and throw stuff all the time. Uh, but when we're talking about a four-year-old child here, we're talking about an overhand throw. And then they should be able to copy a square. And a square is a little bit more difficult to draw because we're talking about straight lines, drawing vertical and horizontal lines. And drawing a straight line is a lot harder than drawing a circle. So here's our summary of important motor milestones. These would be the more important ones that I would remember. So by one month of age, baby's raising their head off the table. By two months of age, they should be able to hold their head steady while sitting in lap. By four months of age, the baby should be able to lift their head above a plane when held in horizontal suspension. They should be able to grasp objects, if not drop them. Uh, they should be able to, uh, they should have doubled their birth weight by this point. Uh, by six months of age, they should be manipulating and transferring objects from hand to hand and their primitive motor reflexes should be gone. Uh, eight months of age is usually when the pincer grasp co comes out, also when they uh, might start crawling or rolling over. One year of age, they're cruising, standing on their own, tripled birth weight. By 15 months of age, they're walking. Uh, 16 months of age, they will probably be scribbling with crayons, uh, but probably not drawing anything uh, coherent with it. Uh, they're also able to build a tower of two or three blocks. By 18 months of age, they're running, uh, albeit awkwardly, uh, building a tower of four blocks. Uh, by two years of age, they're running normally, uh, crawling uh, this uh, around the stairs, and then building a tower of seven blocks. By two and a half, they've quadrupled their birth weight, and they should ascend the stairs normally, and they're usually able to stand on one foot. By three years of age, they're descending the stairs with alternating feet, like an adult. Um, they should be able to copy a circle. By four years of age, they're able to hop and copy a square. And then also by five years of age, they're able to copy a triangle. So here's how I remember it. Circle is the easiest shape to draw. That's at three years of age. A square is at four years of age. A square has four sides. Triangle is a much harder sh shape to draw because they have to connect three lines that are going in opposite directions, all different directions. So that's why that shape comes on a little later. And then finally, well-child visits are important, uh, particularly um, these, uh, well, uh, four, five, and six, having the two-month, four-month, and six-month examination, um, because this is when a lot of the problems will come out. But the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends all of these visits uh, to assess the child, uh, look at their growth and development, and make sure that they're hitting their milestones appropriately. So if you have any questions, let me know.